Now we're going to rapid fire run through 10 ecosystem spotlights of one minute each, starting with the amazing Clara and the Filecoin Foundation. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm going to keep it short, but many of you guys last month were at Phil Lisbon and all the other 40 events that were happening <laughs> those two weeks. Um, we had one uh, amazing announcement that Daniel is going to talk about later with the Decentralized Storage Alliance announced with Seagate, AMD, Ernest & Young, ourselves and Protocol Labs. We also shared an announcement with uh, our work with um, to introduce, introduce Democracy's Library, which is with uh, the Internet Archive to really bring more public data sets onto the Filecoin network. We also actually won the Web3 and Blockchain Transformation Entrepreneurship Award in the IT infrastructure category um, at, at this uh, conference in, in Canada that was represented by Danny, as we can see here. So those are my quick updates. Awesome. You can always play where in the world is Clara and where is she winning awards? Next, Brendan's going to walk through Filecoin Orbit. Hey, everyone. Yeah, so for some high-level updates on Orbit, we have had 64 events year-to-date. Um, we're in 17 cities, eight communities, uh, over 5,000 attendees across all our events, and have over 50 ambassadors now. Um, so Filecoin Orbit Bangalore is actually happening right now. And then upcoming, we have this Saturday, Preserving Art with Decentralization in Miami for Art Basel, and Clara is actually speaking there. Um, also, future of web development on IPFS in Kampala and the application and future of Web3 storage in Chengdu and then Filecoin milestone in Haifei. Um, I linked some social highlights here from Phil Accra and Orbit Nanjing. And then also just threw a couple of pictures up here from our recent Orbit Nigeria meetup and then our Orbit Infinity hackathon that we hosted. Awesome. An amazing grassroots effort to build the communities and some of the great events we've been hosting. And now SPK studies. Hi, everybody. The last time I was here, I spoke to you about the Filecoin storage provider case study program. And so I'm excited to say that we've already published three case studies. That was from Q3. So we have three more coming up in Q4. Um, but there's a link here where you can check out all these case studies that we've already published. Um, each one really has an interesting story to tell. Greater Heat successfully re relocated out of China. Picnic is really well known uh, for founding ESPA and is um, a, a big leader in the North American space. And Lucky Storage is just a really cool story where they're repurposing the old Lucky Strike tobacco factory into a data storage center, a Web3 um, data center. So check those out at that link and look for more to come this quarter. Thank you. Awesome. And now Graven with the GeoWeb. Hey everyone, thanks for having me. Um, I've been personally hanging out in the PL ecosystem for a while, but um, also excited to talk about the GeoWeb today. We are a recent uh, Filecoin Dev Grant recipient, so thank you. Um, the announcement here today is that we will be launching our Harbor Tax based property rights system on Optimism uh, this month. Um, that integrates with IPFS, Filecoin, uh, and Ceramic for our uh, geospatial content layer. Um, so we're excited to get it out there. We've been working on this for a long time. So thank you for the support. Uh, but the ask today is check us out, um, help share what we're doing, uh, maybe become a user and or a builder on the GeoWeb. Um, so thanks. Awesome initiative. Let's all get out and support uh, them, get the word out. And now Giannis will live P2P. Hello, everyone. Uh, jumping in from PLN Dress to uh, bring a quick announcement here. We're going to be doing a measurement campaign on the uh, nut hole punching feature of Flip B2B, which is actually starting today. And I want to call out to as many members as possible from this group, uh, as well as all the other companies that you uh, work with, to sign up and participate. So you can. Um, uh, you can scan this QR code, which will take you to the download page. Uh, you download the binary for your own computer, uh, and you just basically leave it running throughout December for as long as possible. There are different um, versions for uh, Mac OS and Linux. Uh, it's really easy. There are no technical skills required. You don't need to be running a, uh, an IPFS node or LPTP node or anything like that. Um, it's using very minimal resources, so you won't basically notice 
Um, it's fine if you move to different places, like from home to office or a coffee shop, or if you use a VPN, uh, it will just do its own uh, thing. So there is really no excuse to skip participating. When you do install it, you'll see this little um, glove uh, box glove up in your uh, taskbar, uh, which you can click and see if it's running. You can, like the new version has got um, an extra feature there where you can go and see your own results out of your own uh, nut, uh, if it's hole punched successfully or not, and how many times. So uh, a really important thing for the Lipid P team to get as much data uh, as they can so that, um, yeah, so that we see if the feature is um, is successful. It's a very important thing for P2P networks more in general, and it's going to increase tremendously the capabilities of Lipid-P and IPFS. So please go and participate. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Let's all go support and get some feedback back to the Lib P2P team on that. And now data onboarding website update. Hey, everybody. This is a ceiling from Client Growth Team. Today, I'm going to quickly share the performance of our data onboarding website. So just uh, we launched it two weeks ago. The website is on fire. We already got thousands of visitors uh, to this website with high engagement. And we actually captured uh, 90 90 leads with uh, like like enterprise interest. So uh, they all share the uh, interest to onboard their large data with us, including some phenomenal company like IBM and also like the top MBA uh, university in India and uh, a civil right um, organization from Brazil. So definitely we have the organic interest from all over the world right now. Um, the team is working on, you know, uh, learning more about the use cases and convert, hopefully converting some of them. And uh, I ask for the group is definitely feel free to check out our data onboarding website and bring any like business parties you believe going to be benefit from storing the data on Filecoin. And together, we are hoping to bring more valuable data to our network. Thank you. That's great. Great to see the value prop clearly illustrated and to see the leads converting. And now, Daniel. Uh, here to talk about the Decentralized Storage Alliance, also known as the DSA. Uh, we, start, we started the DSA because decentralized storage technologies have not been widely adopted by enterprises. So our mission here is to enable enterprises to adopt and use decentralized storage, Filecoin, IPFS, and LibP2P in their day-to-day -day business operations. And we really want to bridge that gap between Web2 and Web3 and help enterprises make the transition from Web2 to Web3. As Clara mentioned earlier, we launched at Phil Lisbon with commitments from founding members, uh, PL, FF, Seagate, EY, and AMD. And the announcement was super well received across major Web2 and Web3 media outlets. We saw 37 pieces of coverage, over a million views, um, almost a thousand engagements. It got picked up by Coindesk, Cointelegraph, uh, MSN for Yahoo Finance, and actually broke a record on social for Falcon mentions, both on the day that it launched and that week. So now that we're up and running, our objectives here are to create standard specifications. We wanna create reference architectures. We actually already have a enterprise architecture working group with Seagate and EY that meets on a biweekly basis. Uh, we wanna create educational materials, technology improvements, and ultimately working groups that tackle some of these problems to decentralized storage technologies. Uh, if you wanna learn more, please visit dsalliance.io or visit that or scan that code to visit that website. Thank you. It's great to see all these QR codes and all that coverage. HQ with Filecoin TLDR. Hi, everyone. Uh, HQ here. I'm the lead for TLDR, and I'm here on behalf of my team. Um, so actually, um, as you guys know, um, we really help with synthesizing a lot of the content that's being put out on Filecoin. So I wanted to flag um, you know, three main parts. Um, the first is I would encourage... Um, you know, everyone to take a look at the blog. Um, we recently published two blog posts. Um, the first is actually a, a summary on the state and direction of Filecoin, which I'll go into a little bit more in the deep dive later. And the second one is actually a primer around tokenomics. So if you're interested in, you know, what goes into circulating supply, um, you know, the sinks and the sources of uh, the token supply, like feel free to check that out. 
both are pretty short reads. Um, there are also three videos that came out in the last in this month um, that we really liked. So there is one uh, Juan's talk, actually an introduction to interplanetary consensus that was really, really good. Um, and there were two talks by the Lug team um, that I believe were presented at Lab Week that were really good to understand um, their effort in the compute over data. Uh, and lastly, there are two things to check out. Uh, I think there is one publication around uh, a compilation on the ways to stake fill. Um, feel free to check that out on our website. And then uh, we also recently concluded the first ever FVM hackathon. And, you know, I personally thought that that was really impressive. We had 100 over, um, you know, submissions. And I found that article really interesting on like, you know, the winners of the hackathon and I was checking them out. So yeah, that's the TLDR for November. Great, thanks. Thank you. Uh, team has done an amazing job kind of demystifying all that's going on in our ecosystem. Mm -hmm.